Hey guys, I hope that I'm live right now. If you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there is no issues with the audio or the video, please do let me know. Hello everyone, I hope that I'm live right now. If you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there is no issues with the audio or the video, please do let me know. If there is any problems with the audio or the video guys, please do let me know. Good evening everyone, good evening. We'll be waiting for five more minutes so that everyone is able to join and then we'll start. Thank you so much. Uh, Abhil, uh, Sahu and Srijan. Okay, no issues. Okay, great, great. Amazing guys. Amazing. Uh, so today we are going to continue from where we had left yesterday. I think so. We had reached and almost completed a bit of uh, strings as well. Today we need to start off from I guess type conversion revision I've already done that so yeah we need to start from uh, one more important string method that is format so I think so it would be very easy for us okay we there would be wouldn't be something that would be too difficult if you guys were able to cope up with the last two days then uh, we'll be able to understand for the next uh, few days as well okay we'll just wait for five more minutes so that everyone is able to join us okay Abdel, that will be point of time. If you guys have any questions or any queries, please do let me know. So somebody told me that my video is very small. So I try to keep it small so that you guys are able to focus upon the um, like the text itself that you are able to see. Okay. Otherwise, as well, if you guys uh, have some suggestions for the boot camp, some topics that you want to suggest or something else as well, do let me know and I will surely take that into account. Okay. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Thank you so much, Hitesh. If you guys have any questions, any queries, please do let me know. We still have three more minutes. So if you guys have any questions or any queries, please do let me know. Guys, if you have any questions or any queries, please do let me know. Good evening everyone, good evening. Okay, so I don't think so anybody has any questions. Okay, no issues in that. Um, anything else guys, do you want to tell me something that too you can put it up on the live chat. Okay, don't hesitate about it. Can you suggest a path for data science? Uh, gaming is fun. Uh, what we'll do is once we have started off with a bit of machine learning, understood a bit of data science as well, like what it actually means, the term, once we have completed, uh, completed Python, one day I will definitely give just for going over a pathway to become a data scientist or a data analyst or how to get into this particular stream both from a, a standpoint of a particular person who is an enthusiast and a particular person who wants to get into a company for that particular role. So for both for placements, internships, as well as an enthusiast, I will be talking about it and I will be telling about it in such a way that it will be from scratch. Okay. That means that, uh, if you don't know anything from there, how can you end up into a particular company where you're working in data science itself? Okay. Uh, okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, Pranav Rao, will there be a boot camp for Express and Node.js? Uh, right now, pra Praveen, we are having a boot camp for Node.js, MongoDB, and JavaScript. So, the next boot camp, uh, I don't think, I think so. You guys have got the information for the same as well. So, let me just check. The next boot camp that has been scheduled is Learn Server Authentication uh, using MongoDB and Node.js. You will be learning JavaScript, you will be learning MongoDB, you will be learning Node.js in that bootcamp as well. Okay. Uh, sure. Uh, Sabrina, I will definitely take that into account as well. Uh, if it's possible, Sabrina, while I'm showing you the uh, attendance link for today, just remind me that to turn on the uh, responses uh, as well. Okay. So that you are able to get the responses. That will be really a very amazing. Okay, I'm not able to see anything due to the light that is on my face. Just give me a second. Brightness. Okay. 
is there any boot camp for cyber security madan we used to have boot camps for cyber security and ethical hacking as well okay but uh, we have stopped doing it because uh, right now the number of jobs for ethical hacking and cyber security is exceptionally low like it's so low that uh, learning that the co competition is huge and the job opportunities is very low so the rate of unemployment in that particular sector has increased substantially but uh, as far as for uh, cyber security as a field goes on uh, we have some trainings uh, in place as well but my suggestion to you would be from like i have already like the person who takes up the cyber security program for us is the particular person who works as a cyber security engineer at google so i had a very good conversation with him and his suggestion to the students was to first focus upon full stack once you have learned the entirety of full stack web development that includes back end front end devops cloud then it's easier to get into cyber security while making sure that you have a well paid job so that transaction and that that guarantees you that you are going to have a well paid job at the end of the day and that is the aim if you want to learn cyber security it is built upon the basics of networking and back end as well as cloud computing so if you are able to learn the entirety of full stack i think so that should be your priority goal okay so please give a recap of yesterday's class uh, shubham sure i will do that as well uh, can you suggest sir, which uh, language is best for data structures and algorithms uh, ms manvi for me uh, it's always c++ that for, that is my favorite language but i would usually suggest students to either choose between c++ or java no other language not python not javascript not go no other language just no scala as well just c++ or java okay uh bikram what should i search in google before learning deployment as i have both front end and back end knowledge bikram could you please let me know what type of knowledge do you have what type of technologies have you worked on in front end and back end uh, could you let me know bikram that would be amazing we will be completing python today uh, i have no idea <laughs> if we are able i will try my best to be able to complete uh, if it's possible but uh, yeah like let's see how it goes on okay uh, mern stack uh, okay bikram if you have already learned mern stack my suggestion to you would be first learn deployment and take into account aws okay if you know mern stack now it's very easy just search for it how to deploy a node js uh, backend application or mern stack application to the cloud or to aws cloud okay just search for it learn about it and then slowly and slowly go in deeper once you have learned about deployment then go into devops okay so how can i convert a monolithic architecture into a microservice architecture how will different microservices talk to each other learn about docker docker compose docker volume learn about kubernetes learn about ci cd learn about all these concepts it's extremely very important version control i hope that when you are learning mern stack you have already learned about version control as well uh, is, will there be any boot camp in the future in any cloud uh, technology uh, vidya right now we haven't planned anything for cloud but definitely we will have one event i will definitely take this into account every month i will try to have one event on uh, cyber security one event on cloud computing as well Okay, I will try my best. I cannot guarantee you the same, but I always love to take feedback and work upon it as well. Okay. No C, it's not C language. C language is absolute shit. Do not learn C language. C language is only limited to your university exams. It will not be asked in your placements. No company wants you to know C language. Okay. Either choose between C plus plus or C P P or Java. Okay. okay so let's get started guys so first a quick revision about what we had learned to, uh, yesterday so yesterday we had started to learn about different data types in python we learned about the int and the float data types that is integer and floating point numbers we learned about the boolean data type we learned about comparison and logical operators we then moved on to your strings we learned a lot about strings as well we learned about type type conversions we learned about how to use uh, escape characters to have quotations in your uh, string as well okay we learned about concatenation 
we learned about multiplication we learned about uh, the length function that you can apply on strings as well so all these different things are what we had studied yesterday today what we are going to do is today we are going to start off with the next topic uh, that is also an important method related to strings itself uh, that is the format method so just give me a second i need to switch off the light on my face i'm not able to see anything due to that give me a second guys So let's continue from right over here. Uh, which one is better, C plus plus or Java for college placements? Both are equally important. Both are uh, equally good. Okay, learning any of those language will result you into the same thing. C plus plus is easier to learn at the end of the day rather than Java. Okay, that's the main thing. That's why I always say C plus uh, plus. But that's the only difference. The rest of the same uh, is the exact same thing. Okay, okay. So let's start off with the uh, format method. Are you guys? Uh, should I start? Please let me know, guys. Should I start? Please let me know. Uh, somebody please help uh, Shubhita Sarkar. Okay, okay, great. Uh, so one important string method is the format method. We have already looked at one more method that was our length method that we had seen that re uh, returned to back to us the length, the number of characters present in a string itself. We'll be using the format string method in a good uh, bit in our future work in Python. So we won't be using it. If you were in our training program, then format is a particular method that you use uh, very frequently in data science as well as AI as well as uh, computer vision. Okay. Uh, and you will find it very valuable in your coding, especially your print statements. We can best illustrate how to use format by looking at some examples as well. Let's look at something. So right over here, when you had to have the entire, uh, like uh, you wanted to include marks inside your uh, sentence itself, you had to add so you had to write such a long code. You had to write I score, then you had to enter something concatenated within. Then with subject, you would have to keep the spaces. Okay, so you would have to put spaces right over here. You would have to keep a track of a lot of different things. And just this does not look tidy. It's look very shabby. This code is not looking good at all. So to uh, make sure that this is legible, this is much more understandable and easier to write as well. You are having the format method to input variables as well as integers, numbers, floats uh, without using concatenation into a string. That is the method uh, for using format method itself okay so right over here for example as you're able to see you are having muhammad has dash balloons okay by dash i means two curly brackets and then you are having your so this is a particular string then you are having the dot format method dot format and i want to introduce i want to put 27 right over here so instead of this particular uh, Curly brackets, I want to have 27. So I want the sentence to be Muhammad has 27 balloons. So instead of doing that, I can just write the sentence dot format and 27. I don't even have to convert 27 to a string. Uh, Python will automatically do that for me. Python will convert 27 to a string. Whatever is present inside the format will then, uh, Priyanshu, just give me some water for the class. Okay, so 27 will then be replacing the curly brackets right over here and you will get the answer as Muhammad has 27 balloons. Similarly, for example, I need to uh, include like multiple variables inside. Does your dog bite? This is what I want my sentence to look like. Does your dog bite? Okay, so I will just have does your, then I will have the first curly brackets, then I will have the second curly brackets right over here. Then dot format animal comma action. Animal is the dog. Action is bite. And each of them will replace the uh, curly brackets respectively according to their order. So the first variable will replace the first curly bracket. 
the second variable will replace the second curly bracket right over here i can even have like some number right over here and that number would then replace the second curly brackets okay uh, and similarly right over here as well i've just created a variable which stores my string right over here so that variable basically has the value of the string so i can directly use that so that isn't uh, much of a rocket science to understand so if i'm running this particular lines of code you are easily able to see that i'm getting mobba has 27 balloons does your dog bite maria loves math and statistics okay yeah uh praveen you are absolutely clever okay it's like an access specifier itself but not a very like you don't have to specify the data type for it okay it uh, if you are having the data as like 27.0 it will automatically convert it into string and put it right over there okay so that is the use of the format method are you guys able to understand this please let me know what does format command do like I said right now, whatever you specified right over here, it will replace the curly brackets by that value and generate a new string for you. So Muhammad has 27 balloons. The value you are able to put inside the string without the use of any concatenation, without the use of any type conversions, you are automatically able to do it. So it is basically used to instead of writing something like this. Okay, writing something like this in which there are so many uh, concatenations, so many data conversions, you can directly uh, use the format method. Okay, are you guys able to understand? Please let me know, guys. Guys, there are 112 of you right over here. Please uh, let me know if you are able to understand or not. Explain a little bit once again, no issues in that. You are having a format method. Format method is used on strings. Okay, you are having a string. You want to, so instead of writing this as Muhammad has, then you will be having another uh, like quotation mark, then a concatenation, then you will be writing like uh, str and then you will be converting 27.0 to a string right over here. Then you will have another concatenation and then you will have a space and then these uh, uh, double quotation marks. So instead of writing this entire huge and shabby piece of line, you can directly use the format method by removing everything from right over here, having two curly brackets and whatever is present inside the uh, quote uh, inside the format method would directly replace the double quotation uh, double uh, curly brackets right over here without any type conversions or anything like that okay so it's basically used to create your strings okay in input data inside your strings basically okay are you guys able to understand please let me know great Yes, you can use variable in format as well as you are able to see here we have used variables here as well you have used variables so you can definitely use that as well. Okay. Great. Okay, let's move on to the next topic that is list and membership operators. Okay, so now we are moving on from the area of data types to the area and the arena of data structures. Okay. So what is a data structure? Let's try to understand that. You're having various data. Okay, you are having a ball, you are having a square, you are having uh, some uh, triangles as well. But you need to carry this data from one place to another. To do that, you need a container, you need a bucket, you need a bag where you are able to put and arrange all these squares and shapes and circles inside and carry them from one place to another. Okay, now this container can be of different types as well. Maybe for some container, there are individual boxes in which you can put each of these shapes in. Maybe for some container, it's just like a bucket. You just put all the stuff inside of it and then carry it. So all these containers are very important for us. So that is what data structures are. Data structures are containers 
or structures which are able to contain data within them okay so one of the main examples of data structures is lists lists are very similar to arrays that you have learned in other programming languages as well in python they are referred to as lists okay so data structures are containers that organize and group data types together in different ways this is the absolute definition the proper definition of data structures okay a list is one of the most common and basic data structure in python it is a mutable ordered sequence of elements please remember can somebody let me know what was strengths we haven't learned about it what is mutability what is ordered but what was strengths list list is mutable ordered sequence of elements what was strengths i told you guys to remember it can somebody let me know in the live chat please can somebody let me know in the live chat what was uh, strings? Immutable and ordered. Okay, that's great. Praveen, you have remembered it correctly. Immutable and ordered. Okay, so let's look at the code below defines a variable students which contain a list of strings. Okay, each element in the list is a string that signifies the name of a student. The data inside a list can be a mixture of any number and combination of different data types. The list can contain floats, bools, integers, uh, as well as other lists and strings inside of it. Okay, so you don't have to worry about it. It can contain anything. But right now, just for the sake of simplicity, we have taken up a particular list of strings as you are able to see. We have a students list. This is how you create a list. So list students is equals to then in uh, rectangular uh, brackets, you will be putting up all the elements that you need your string to contain. Okay. So uh, Ritika, like Radhika, I have already said, we will be coming about immutability, what is order, what is mutable right now. First, we need to understand about strings as well as membership operators. Then as you're able to see slowly and suddenly we'll come to mutability as well. Okay, mutability and order is also there. So please uh, wait for the same. Okay. <clears throat> so Sam, Pam, Rocky, Austin, Steve, Banner, we have already put it up right over here. Uh, you need to separate each of these elements by a comma. You can opt not to put this comma as well. It will work fine. Okay. But at some times you might end up into an error as well so it's always a good practice it's not compulsory but it's always a good practice to put up a comma after every single elements separating them okay okay great lists are ordered we can look up individual elements by their index and we can look at elements from a list just like we have done below so what is the meaning behind ordered okay that is <clears throat> the way that you are writing okay the way that you are writing this particular list in the same way it is getting stored as well think about each of these elements as a individual house okay so you are having a house name as sam a house name as pam a house name as rocky a house name as t austin a house name as steve and a house name as banner now when you are looking at a particular house each of this house has its very own address as well so maybe sam lives on brooklyn uh, street maybe pam lives in delhi maybe rocky lives in argentina maybe austin lives in uh, some place else uh, steve lives in queens okay banner lives uh, i don't know where banner was maybe in dc so all these different people have different addresses associated with them as well Similarly, in list as well, each of these elements have their own addresses. So Sam is present at the address 0. In Python, we start counting from 0 because Python, like many other languages, is a 0th indexed language. Okay, Python is a 0th indexed language. So you are having Sam at 0, Pam at 1, Rocky at 2, Austin at 3, Steve at 4, and Banner at 5. Okay, so they, they have their own individual indices by which you can uh, get these elements as well. You can use these elements by using these addresses. Okay, so that's why uh, lists are called as ordered. Okay, lists are called as ordered because the order remains the same. The order it is being saved. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 as you are able to see. So you are putting Sam first. So Sam will be at 0. You are putting Pam next. So Pam will be at 1 and so on and so forth. Forth. hence it is called as 
ordered in nature okay so right over here if i'm trying to access something so i have to name the list that is students and then in uh, your rectangular uh, brackets you are putting up zero that is at the zeroth index which particular element is present so we know that at zeroth index sam is present if i am running these particular lines of code you will be able to see sam pam and rocky being shown to your screen okay now you need to understand paint now you need to understand one more thing now uh, for example if i am having a particular list let's say Let's create a list right now for size four. Uh, we are having a comma b comma c comma d comma e. This is our list. So the counting of these indexes, okay, would be zero, one, two, three, four, and next it will start from minus one after zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, and minus five. There is no minus six. There is no plus five. Okay, it only goes in one direction. That is zero, one, two, three, four, and it comes back in the other direction by minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. So if I'm writing something like maybe this list is called as L, so L minus four. Okay, what will be the value of L minus four? Can somebody let me know? Okay, what will be the value of L minus four, guys? Can somebody let me know? L is the name of this particular list that I have created. What will be the value of L minus four? <clears throat> that that's absolutely clear, guys. That L minus four is equals to L one is equals to B. Okay, so all that means the exact same thing. Again, you do not have anything. You do not have minus six, minus seven. You don't have those numbers. You don't have plus five, plus six, plus seven. You don't have that. It goes from one to zero, one, two, three, four, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, and minus five. Okay, okay, amazing, guys, amazing. Again, please do remember this happens because Python, like various different uh, languages, is a zeroth index language. Okay, it's a zeroth index language. Okay, if you try to access something like uh, students twenty, this index does not exist. So it will just show you index out of range error. Okay, the list index is out of range. The range is basically zero to five, and then minus one to minus six. That would be the range. Okay, great. Uh, so look, let's look at some membership operators as well. How to find the indexing of Sam of M? So Sam, as you are able to see, Sam is minus one, so it it is automatically minus one itself. Okay, it's automatically minus one. Oh, sorry, uh, what I'm saying, it is automatically zero. It starts from zero itself. That's the reason why it will automatically be zero. Okay. Okay. membership operators on lists so in addition to accessing individual elements uh, from a list we can use python slicing notation to access a sub sequence of a list as well so let's look at that for example you are having this particular list sam pam rocky austin steve banner tony bruce henry clark and diana okay so you are having all these different uh, names inside of our students list and we are having a student as well this is singular as you are able to see that is a string that is called as fanny okay so if you want only the people who are currently in a marvel movie okay you want a list of those students then you want from steve to tony okay you want just these three names from this list how can you do that for that you are having this slicing notation in python In slicing notation, you want to have a particular uh, range of people. For example, right over here, Steve is zero, one, two, three, four. So Steve is four, and uh, Tony is six. Okay, Steve is four, and Tony is six. So to do that, you are having your slicing notation. Just write the name of the list that you want to slice. Write the first uh, index where you want to start the slicing. So I want to start the slicing at index four. So I'll write four, and then where do you want to go up till up to? Okay. Uh, so I will stop before this particular index. 
up to i will not include this particular index i will go up to this particular index okay so tony is 6 so i will go up to 7 i won't include bruce i won't include 7 so i have to write 4 up to 7 okay 4 up to 7 okay so that will be 4 5 and 6 right over here similarly if i want uh, something from flash okay i want it from 1 to 3 that would be 1 0 1 2 so i will just have 1 and 2 i will go up till 3 i won't include 3 okay so right over here if i'm printing it out you will be able to see that steve banner and tony is being printed out just like we discussed and ar is being printed out okay and ar is being printed out this is student a student is a particular string so your slicing notation works both on strings as well as on lists as well okay are you guys able to understand this please let me know okay so now what if if you want to start so for example i want to get everybody who is currently working in a dc movie so i will have to start from bruce and I have to go up till the very end. Okay. So I want to go up till the very end of the list itself. So I want to start from Bruce. I know Bruce is 7. So I will start from uh, 7. But I won't specify the next number. That means I want to go up till the very end of the list itself. Similarly for the uh, strings as well. The same thing works. So if I am running this. We will get Bruce, Henry, Clark and Diana as well as a r r y r e as well okay that is for the student that is the string itself similarly if you want to start from the first index you want to start from the zeroth index and go up till a particular index itself then you just have to specify the second number that till, till where do you want to go okay you just have to specify up till where you want to go okay yeah bruce should be in both as well as uh, sam is now officially the captain america so he should also be a part of marvel but uh, i had created this entire notebook way before that happened so that is the reason why it does not contain that okay okay great so you just have to specify the second index up till where you want to go it will start from the uh, initial phase itself that is from zeroth index itself as you are able to see this would also work in the same way sam pam rocky austin and then you are having your flash that is your b a r bar itself okay now the length function that we had seen okay the length function that we had seen for uh, strings that exists for your uh, student that is your strings as well so it exists for both strings as well as your lists for strings it return to you the characters number of characters present in the string for lists it re represents the number of elements present inside the list for example in this particular list right over here we are having one two three four five six seven nine 10, 11. We are having 11 elements present in this list. So the length of this particular list is 11. For our string B A R R Y, we are having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 characters present in this particular string. So the length would be 5 itself. Okay. So let's run that right now. So it should be 11 and 5. Okay. As you are able to see, we are able to get 11 and 5 as our answer. Great. After the types we have seen, lists are most familiar to strings. Both support the length function, indexing and slicing. So length was also supported by both. Indexing is also supported by both. Slicing is also supported by both. Here you have seen that the length of a function is the number of characters in the string. As the length of a list is the number of elements present inside the list itself. So now let us look at the membership operators. What do you understand by membership? Okay. Are you a member of a club or are you not a member of a club? That is basically the meaning behind membership itself. I've already told you that Python is the exact same as learning about English. An English with a very bad grammatical mistakes made everywhere. Okay. So let's read, read this particular line of code. Okay. We are having greeting is equals to hello there. Print 
her in greeting you are basically asking is her present in greeting is her a member of greeting so let's check so you're having h e o k h l so this is not present right over here you're having h e r right over here so her in greeting yes her is present in greeting so this would be true this particular statement her in greeting because we found her in greeting so this statement is true whereas her not in greeting is her not in greeting no her is present in greeting so this particular statement would be false so if i am running this particular line of code you are able to see that we are getting true for the first part and and false for the second and this is the membership operator in checks whether something is present or not not in checks whether something is not present inside it or not okay so this was the example for a particular string now for a particular list as you are able to see is shape ai present in the list students so we have already seen the students list right over here and you are able to see that shape ai is not present right over there so if we are coming back to right over here a bit down yeah we are coming back in here so is shape ai present in students no it is not present so this would be false this time and shape ai not in students yes shape ai is not in students so this would be true so if i'm running this it should be false and then true okay are you guys able to understand up till here please let me know are you guys able to understand up till here please let me know guys Great. Let's move on to the next topic that is mutability and order. Okay. So how are lists different from strings? Okay. Both support slicing, indexing, in and not in operators. That is the membership operators. Okay. Both are ordered as well in uh, nature. The most obvious difference between them is that string is a sequence of characters. Well, the list is a sequence of elements that can be of different types that is strings, integer, float, bool. So that is the most common answer that you will be able to hear. Okay. Um, a more important difference is that lists can be modified, but strings can't. Okay. So we can modify a list. We can change a list. Okay. But we cannot change a particular uh string itself rahul rahul please don't uh, like spread nonsense in the live chat if you don't want to study you can leave okay the facebook loan project has already been done the project submissions have already been taken up either you were not present in the class or you were just sleeping so that is your responsibility not mine okay but if you uh spread this nonsense within the live chat right now i will just remove you okay Great. okay so a more important difference is that string lists can be modified but strings can't okay so let's look at this we are having a list right over here the same students list okay and you are having students two okay that is students two that is the second index that is rocky and i'm changing it to ben okay so now the element present at the index 2 will be changed to ben okay instead of rocky you are able to have ben right over here now this is a this is called as mutability you are able to change it you are able to edit it you are able to alter it that is called as mutable or not is it changeable or not is it editable or not so that is the mutability so hence lists are mutable you are able to change a list okay Let's look at a particular string right over here. You are having Barry. If you are trying to select A, I want to convert Barry to Berry. Okay. So if I am trying to select the first index that is A right over here and change it to E, you will be able to see that we are getting an error. Okay. So str object does not support item assignment. Okay. That is strings are immutable in nature. If, you, if I want to change Barry to Berry, the only way possible is to reassign the entire thing. So I would have to write B E R R Y right over here. I would have to reassign the entire thing to be able to change it. So hence lists are mutable. We, we are able to change a particular element in a particular list. But strings are immutable. You are not able to change the elements present inside a string itself. Okay. 
Mutability is about whether or not we can change an object once it has been created. If an object like a list or a string can be changed, like lists can, it is called as mutable. However, if an object cannot be changed without creating a completely new object like strings, then the object is considered immutable in nature. Okay. Are you guys able to understand what does mutable and immutable mean? Please let me know. Are you guys able to understand what is mutability? Please let me know. Guys, please let me know if you are able to understand or not. I will explain it once again, okay. Immutability means whether something can be changed or not, okay. So in list, you can take out a particular element and change it to Ben, okay. And it will work, for example, right over here, it was first Rocky and you are able to change it to Ben. So it would work, there would be no issues. But in strings, you cannot do that, okay. You cannot do that, right over here, you are having A, you cannot change it to E, okay. That will mean that this is immutable in nature. Best video song, so, uh, status song, when we'll be reaching tuple, you will be able to know it at that point of time itself. Don't rush forward. Okay, that basically means immutable. So basically strings are immutable in nature, whereas lists are mutable in nature. Okay, order is about whether the position of an element in an object can be used to access that element okay so yes we can use like string uh, then the first character what is present at the first index what is present at the second index in both lists as well as strings that means that both of them are ordered in nature okay both of them are ordered in nature uh, right now we are not going to cover uh, an ordered uh, data types but if you were continuing with just python uh, then in that particular case, you would have seen some unordered data types as well. Okay. Okay. So we can skip this particular portion for right now. Okay. This won't be necessary for you guys to learn uh, for the upcoming project. So we can skip that particular portion. Uh, join. Join is another useful function for lists. Join is a string method that takes a list of strings as an argument and returns a list consisting of list elements joined by a separator string. Okay, so right over here as you are able to see, uh, join is another uh, function that is present under the method uh, for strings itself. For example, I have a list of strings, okay, I have a list of strings right over here and I, I want to uh, just like have a hyphen in between them. So I want to have like jack hyphen o hyphen lantern within the uh, list of strings itself and I want to attach them together, concatenate them together into a single uh, string, okay. To do that you are having your whatever the separator, the whatever you want to use to join the uh, strings present inside the list. You put that up right over here, then you put the join method and then you are having the list inside the join method. Now what will happen is, the join method will append all these strings together with separated by the separator that you are starting off with. The separator can be a letter, the separator can be an entire word, this separator can be a number, this, sep this separator can be a special character right over here. Okay, for example, hyphen or underscore. This can also be a special character. For example, let's say, let's go on with the original one that is backslash n. So that will take it to the next particular line itself. So you'll be able to have jack to the next line o to the next line lantern. Okay, so you can do various different things using the join operation as well. Okay, are you guys able to understand? Please let me know.
Are you guys able to understand? Please let me know. Uh, don't worry about uh, the example for an unordered uh, data type. When we'll be learning about uh, di dictionaries, we'll be able to understand it. Dictionary is an example of an unordered data type. Okay, you don't have to worry about it. Just be a bit patient. Okay. Okay. So another particular uh, method that is present in strings is a uh, list is the append method okay so for example you are having a particular list of elements you want to add another element to it you want to include another element to it okay so you can directly use letters that is the name of the list dot append okay that is you want to add a particular element uh, into letters and then e okay so you are adding an element called as e inside your letters list okay that is what you are doing right over here Okay, so right over here, letters will now include E as well. Are you able to understand this? Please let me know. Are you guys able to understand the uh, append method? Please let me know, guys. Great. So tuples is another data type uh, data structures present in Python itself. A tuple is an another useful container. It's a data type for immutable ordered sequence of elements. Can somebody let me know which other uh, thing that we have seen, which other object we have seen in Python that is also immutable ordered sequence of elements? Can somebody let me know? Which is the other... Uh, object that we have seen in python that is immutable ordered sequence of elements can somebody remind me of the same guys please let me know yeah vijendra it was not important for this particular uh, bootcamp that's the reason why i have skipped it Okay, great. We have seen strings, okay, as an another example of the same. So, tuples are also immutable ordered sequence of elements. They are often used to store related pieces of information, okay. For example, x, y, z coordinates, length, width and breadth, uh, longitude and uh, latitude and height. So, all these related pieces of information that are related to each other and usually uh, used at the same point of time are used, uh, are represented in Python using tuples, okay? So creating a tuple is extremely easy. You create the variable name and then inside of round brackets, you are having the tuple it itself, okay? You are having the elements inside the tuple. You can access each of these elements as it is ordered. So you can access each of these elements by their indexes. So vector zero would give you four, vector one would give you five, vector two would give you nine. So if I'm running this particular line of code, you will be able to see that we are getting four, five and nine being printed out to your screens right now. Okay. Okay, let's do one thing. We'll do tuples tomorrow. I will show you guys the attendance link as of this particular moment. We'll have to find the attendance link. Uh, once I've showed you the attendance link, uh, we'll continue with the class, okay? It's not that we'll be doing it tomorrow, we'll be continuing with the class, so please wait, okay? Once I've showed the attendance, we will be continuing with the class, we won't be skipping the class, okay? Yeah, sure, Sabrina, I will do that as well. Okay, so let me share the link 
with you guys so this is the link for the attendance sheet okay you can take a screenshot i will show the qr code as well the qr code once the class is over you can directly just go back and uh, you will be able to see the qr code as well okay so you can ignore it right now we we'll learned a bit of numpy not a lot okay but yes i plan to teach you guys a bit of numpy as well okay okay so tuples are similar to lists in that they store an ordered collection of objects which can be accessed by their indices unlike list however tuples are immutable okay okay we have already seen that that uh, unlike uh, lists tuples are immutable in nature we cannot add or remove items from a tuple or sort them in place okay we cannot do anything with that just like in strings you cannot like add any new element you cannot change any new element tuples as well you cannot do that okay uh tuples is mostly used where you are having data that is of very similar nature okay that you are usually going to contain it and you are not going to change it regularly okay for example tuples can be used to assign multiple variables in a compact way okay so we have already seen tuples in action and if you remember i told you that we, when we'll be coming back we'll be coming back to multiple variable assignment operator once we have reached tuples okay so that was the place where you had used uh, tuples for the first time so this is nothing else but a tuple itself okay a tuple you can or cannot have a particular so anybody asking for the attendance tell them we don't know okay we don't know where the attendance link is we don't know if the attendance link has been shown or not we have uh, no idea okay uh just fill the attendance form up guys it's of day 3 itself okay don't be such a problematic type of person okay it's day 3 itself don't irritate as you are able to see from the name it's day 3 if it's written day 2 right over here you can understand from right over here itself it's day 3 okay don't be like that okay so right over here itself tuples can or cannot you can or cannot include uh, like the brackets okay it's totally up to you this is also a tuple as well as without the brackets as well that is also a tuple you don't have to worry about it okay so you can use tuple so if i'm just putting uh, brackets on both the sides both of them are actually tuples and tuples is what you use for multiple variable assignment as well okay so depending upon your use if it makes it a very clear that this is a tuple you can put uh, brackets but usually coders omit it okay guys don't tell anybody about the attendance okay they are late i know they were not there in the entire class okay don't tell anybody about the attendance you have filled up the attendance that's great okay just ignore uh, whatever uh, things come for attendance just ignore them Okay, so we were at it. Okay, so right over here as well. For example, the format method. When you were having two different variables that you wanted to put inside your uh, coordinates itself, that two were uh, your tuples. Okay, that two were your tuples themselves. Okay, so it's very easy to understand. You are having location. You create a tuple. You name that tuple as location. Then you. Uh, so this is called as tuple unpacking. Okay. This is called as tuple unpacking. You are having a tuple right over here, and then you are unpacking the tuple. So you have assigned it to a variable called as location. Now you want to reassign those two values inside that tuple to individual variables called as latitude and longitude. Okay, so this is this process is called as tuple unpacking. Okay, and then you can directly use that inside the format method as well. Okay. 
okay so this is officially called as tuple unpacking this is nothing as but just creating a tuple and then performing multiple variable assignment operator on it okay but this officially is called as tuple unpacking okay uh there's nothing new right over here dictionaries and identity operators so let's do dictionaries tomorrow okay no need for doing it today tomorrow we will be starting off with machine learning as well machine learning ai data science what is their meaning what is the different things that are involved in it okay so next two to three days will be a lot theoretical in nature okay um it will be theoretical in nature so please be ready for the same we will be first completing data, uh, dictionaries and identity operators tomorrow and then starting off with the theory okay okay so thank you so much guys and uh, we'll continue from tomorrow it was a great day thank you so much guys thank you